Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So looking at the global markets today, the US 30 is slowly creeping down. Look at the European markets, UK 100 is actually getting hurt a little bit. Mm -hmm. The Germany 30 is a little bit more uh, supported this morning, but uh, we are having a slight curve down here. We're in the middle of two ranges right now. You might have noticed that I've removed a, a number of other old support levels on here just to make it a little bit clearer for us to see. Um, but we've got um, long-legged candles on both the downside and upside with uh, a kind of a bearish engulfing pattern kind of developing on the US theory. It's still just a start of the UK market right here. Um, but as you can see there, we're just about to get a crossover on the MACD. And we've talked before about the slow uh, stochastic and the RSI just about to hit those uh, those sell triggers right there as well. So from a technical perspective, there is a little bit of extra pressure on here. Um, but we do have such a, a large raft of, uh, of data from UK, Europe and the US today, which will help to, uh, to choose the next direction. So looking at the UK 100, um, and this is quite quite a tough one because the candle yesterday was quite negative and then it managed to almost rally right back up, almost into positive territory, only to really get hurt again today. So potentially we're trading below uh, a, a new potential support level that I picked out here, around about 6686. Uh, and uh, that's on the wrong side. And we were looking to be getting a golden cross on the MACD right here, but we have just crossed over the RSI and it's still scotastic there as well. It's just moving to the to the other side, but the signal to sell there has not yet been generated. Um, but this is not so good for the UK 100 in the short term, and it looks a bit ugly on the intraday charts as well, to be completely honest. Um, probably more issues with the resource uh, style uh, miners and stocks and whatnot, because we have seen big moves in the US dollar as ever, and uh, commodity price, uh, prices are getting extra pressure. So looking at the Japan 225, you can see I've got this level here at 17.496. If I actually go back onto my weekly chart, I have to go quite far to pick out this level. But as you can see there, we've got the tip of this candle right here. This gives you a bit of a flavor of what we've what we've seen uh, you know, it's from 2007. So it's a significant level. So when we actually look on the daily interval, you can see the multiple times it's trying to break break above there with a failure to do so. Um, but 17.496 is the level. Almost got that crossover on the MACD. Almost got the break of the RSI. And we're getting this flattening down with a slow stochastic there as well. So talking about uh, the Japanese market, we've got to look at dollar yen which is absolutely soldiering on uh, we actually hit a high uh, last night of 118 spot 94 so 120 almost looks like a formality right now the longer term potential resistance remains 124 spot 42 again we need to go into a weekly um, chart go long term to pick out this level which is all the way back also from 2007 these candles looking quite aggressive as well really strong uh, at least uh, three advancing white soldiers, they call that, as a candlestick formation. Um, and with the FOMC minutes last night, pretty much given the green light for more US dollar strength and the fact that we're probably looking at more stimulus in dollar yen, um, it seems to be that further momentum is quite possible. Though I've certainly read a number of reports from Reuters, and I mentioned this before, that a number of Japanese firms that are um, importing um, kind of raw resources and materials into Japan because they have to import as uh, import a lot of extra goods so they don't have a lot of their own resources are complaining about this dollar yen uh, exchange rate this is great for exporters because it makes them more competitive um, but not so great if you're trying to import lots of raw materials but raw material costs have been dropping you know, crude oil iron ore that's what's hurting Australia and um, obviously causing pain over uh, in Russia um, and we always say, you know, kind of running back here is when people start to complain, but yeah. not everyone. So uh, we've talked before about kind of interventionist policies, but if they're going to be doing stimulus in Japan, that goes completely against what the other Japanese firms are after. So 120 is definitely in sight, 124 the next potential resistance. So moving on to crude oil West Texas there for a second. Um, on the wrong side is 75. Still eyeing up 70. No, 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 it's uh, looks like it's kind of slowly consolidating um, around about this yeah. 74 level. Yeah. Not much else to say that we've not yeah. said before in here. Um, things, a lot of pressure still remains. Um, looking at gold, uh, we were unable to capitalize. Uh, I don't know if you know that the Swiss bank or the Swiss are going through a referendum just now to peg more of the currency to the gold reserves. So they have 20% of their currency reserved as gold. Currently, it's about 9.8%, I believe. Uh, that referendum took a bit of a knock yesterday, as uh, the latest opinion poll shows that it's probably going to be a no vote to the uh, to the extra gold reserves. That's caused a little bit of a tumble there. 1186 is a new potential support level. You can see it was all the way back here December uh, last year. It's been in play again just now, and you know where we are right now. And that's also bouncing around that 21 period SMA. Very quickly finishing up with the euro dollar. 
Your doll's been a bit all over the shop because of that ZEW business report. One spot 25.79 is a new potential resistance. Uh, FOMC didn't really put too much of a cap on your dollar. This is a level to, to keep an eye on. Longer term potential resistance, one spot 27.46. And obviously, any reverse opens up 1.23.67. And to finish up there with cable, um, it's, um, it's not really doing a huge deal. As long as it's trading below one spot 57.43, it's a bit more bearish. We could be looking at 54.24 as the next potential support, and if things really go pear-shaped for cable, because dollar strength is obviously paramount out there, uh, you could be looking all the way down in one spot 48.13. Um, so any retracement to 57.43 could be an interesting level for those clients who have a bearish view, um, but we'll have to wait and see how that pans out. Economic data-wise, we have a fair amount. Um, we Chinese, Chinese data disappointed, um, ever so slightly, forecast 50.3, actual 50. Uh, and then we go retail <coughs> sales here is due at 9.30 UK time. We've got uh, CPI from the US at 1.30. You've got uh, consumer um, outlook surveys, fill, the Philly Fed numbers. You've got jobless claims data and you've got existing home sales. Um, there's a, certainly a huge amount of data coming out uh, for the UK, the US and uh, the Eurozone. So to be honest, I think Euro dollar and cable and uh, dollar yen is probably where a lot of people have their focus today. Um, but it's because that's where the, the, the best potential opportunities are. And uh, yeah, keep your absolutely. eye on the chart forum as ever. Make insights part of your layout going forward. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.